As you guys know, the threat of the EU army continues to escalate. They've already made all the framework and the foundation of the EU Defence Union. And the United Kingdom is also getting involved, thanks to Theresa May at the time when she was Prime Minister. And she originally signed the agreement for us to be more cooperative with these guys. Now, for those who would say, we do live in a globalized world, we have to cooperate with the world, not just with trade, but also security and intelligence and defense. Yes, I fully understand the concept. But the problem we have is that, we, just like anything else with the European Union, if you want to cooperate with them, they do not cooperate, you have to obey. They take full control of your sovereignty in any aspect of politics or governance of the country. So this is about Andrew Britton the MP for Reclaim Party, who has been quite outspoken on a range of issues, which is quite refreshing to see in the House of Commons, mostly because of uh, the, the fact that we have so many MPs, even backbenchers, who claim to not be establishment, but they're still very much quiet on so many of these important problems, whether it's the lockdown harms, excess deaths, uh, the rise of uh, the CCP in China. Now we have this issue and everything else. This was, uh, we've got this video from yesterday in the House of Commons, where Andrew Bridgen decided to speak out against the problems with this whole arrangement of us, you know, so-called cooperation with the EU army. And the government, basically, their response is, this is tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. Yeah. Andrew Bridgen, <coughs> 14, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon. Uh, the UK applied to the Permanent Structure Cooperation Military Mobility Project to help shape EU military transport procedures and infrastructure, addressing impediments to moving military personnel and assets across Europe at base. We are negotiating the technical terms of our participation in the form of an administrative agreement, and we have reached agreement on the majority of the text. Andrew Bridgen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sir Richard Dearlove, former head of MI6, has given evidence to House committees on this issue, and he questioned uh, why we were joining this and who had authorised it. He also stated that membership of these European Union defence structures are not an a la carte menu where the UK can choose what it wants and re reject what it doesn't. It's very much a take it or leave it all or nothing situation. Does the Minister agree with Sir Richard's assessment? Well, Mr Speaker, conspiracy isn't as rife as the Honourable Gentleman seems to think. Um, you can indeed choose which parts of PESCO you wish to be in, and the Mobility Project, which coordinates the development of infrastructure for the movement of NATO weapons and uh, platforms across Europe, seems to be a pretty good thing on which the UK should seek to cooperate with the EU on. David Jones. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As my right honourable friend has mentioned, the UK at the moment is considering acceding only to the military mobility element of PESCO. There are, however, over 60 separate elements. Can my right honourable friend indicate whether the government is considering joining any of those other elements? Well, Mr Speaker, we'll consider them on a case-by-case -case basis. Where there is merit and where it is in the UK interests to work with the European Union to the advantage of NATO and our own national interest, we will, of course, do so. But we won't do so blindly out of habit, only when it's in our interests. You, you, you just confirmed that you're going to be doing you're considering it. So, from everything we know about PESCO, this whole agreement, is that so the minister would say, well, no, no, we can pick and choose. You can't pick and choose. You, it's, it's about categories. So you've got different categories, for example, military mobility and uh, obviously cooperating with the, their forces uh, and obviously getting NATO involved. And they don't even want, they want to uh, become more supreme over NATO. That's the whole point of the European um, the, the Defence Union, the EU Defence Union or the or EU Army. So once you are in that category, then you can't pick and choose. You do have to go along with the collective. It's collectivism. That's the whole point of these international blocks and bodies. So what the minister said, it was basically spinning the message. And so it, was, it wasn't a lie, but it was slightly misleading. And that's what David Jones also basically pointed out the last question, saying, oh, are you considering the other categories? And he said, yeah, we are considering it. If it's in the British interest. Hmm. Who decides? Oh, yes, the government ministers decide. And technically speaking, the bureaucrats behind closed doors who give these advice uh, to the ministers. And this is the problem we have. Do we, can we actually trust the current cabal 
in the establishment to make these very, very important decisions for us. Or do we have to wait and vote, vote for the Labour Party? That's also a bit of a problem. Anyway, this is the latest update on the EU Army and Andrew Bridgen. I'm Maya Tusi, and we are the media.